introduce the up upcoming two keynote section. So uh, the next one is um, uh, uh, from uh, Jamie Jun. So he is uh, the representative from the Hong Kong Computer Society, and he will be talking about the API trends uh, for the uh, 2022 and beyond. And then we are also having uh, Medi to share about the, the state of API industry from, from his experience in, in Europe, et cetera. So one, uh, one key point to look. So um, actually, I think some of you, if you joined your section earlier, we have another section talking about embedded, chi uh, embed embedded finance in China. But uh, the speaker, Greg, uh, is an, uh, unfortunately, uh, he can't join in last minute. So we have an alternative section here. So if you want to know more about that one, we will also have other arrangement in the future. So, okay, so let me pause a bit. So I will hand over the time to Jimmy. So thanks, um, and, and let's welcome Jimmy from Hong Kong Computer Society. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Yes, yeah, uh, really a pleasure to, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can yeah, hear you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Patrick. It's really a pleasure to, to join the event today and do some sharing. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. thanks. Yeah, my, yeah, I'm representing the Hong Kong Computer Society. So uh, I will probably take um, a couple of minutes to just give uh, everybody a quick introduction about ourselves. So yep. can you put the slide? Yep, cool. Yep, yep, yes, good, all good. Okay, Hong Kong Computer Society was founded in 19, uh, 1970. We have more than 50 years of history. So um, the, the purpose, the vision for, for Hong Kong Computer Society is serve Hong Kong as the leading ICT professional body. So uh, basically we, we have five core values. The first one, we, we, are, we want to focus on talent cultivations. We want to actually boom the IT industry in Hong Kong. The second one is professional development. So um, for those uh, IT practitioners in Hong Kong, we want to help them to actually um, improve their, their competence and also prepare ourselves to better serve Hong Kong. The third one is about job assistance and career advancement. We also provide lots of training and, and uh, lots of uh, support to our colleagues so that um, they can help them to uh, build their career in Hong Kong. Um, also, the, 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 the fourth one is about member, member service. Um, we have more than 9,000 members in Hong Kong. We have uh, arranged a lot of networking opportunities, a lot of seminar and webinar for them to actually help them to, um, to um, um, equip with themselves by, uh, with the latest technology, et cetera. And finally, we are also um, promoting the, uh, the industry and uh, provide a lot of engagement community and support, um, helping like government and organization enterprise to, um, to leverage IT to do their, their work. Okay, um, in Hong Kong Campus Society, we have uh, five uh, specialist groups. So one of them is for artificial intelligence, one of them is cybersecurity, and one of them is on enterprise architecture. And actually I'm from that group. And we also have a finance, financial technology uh, innovation entrepreneur. So uh, those five groups, we are doing a lot of uh, webinar and supporting a lot of events like today. And now uh, we are helping um, to actually um, contribute more to the society. Okay, that's enough for um, Hong Kong Computer Society. Let me move on to the uh, topic today, the, the trend on API. So um, no doubt everyone um, know that uh, COVID-19 has changed the world a lot. Um, how does it affect the uh, enterprise and organizations in their plan? So according to um, research, we are seeing that actually um, COVID-19 doesn't really stop any digital transformation. In fact, 70% um, of the organizations tell, tell us that they're going to continue their digital transformation journey. And in fact, 65% um, are saying they're going to accelerating their investment on that. I think one of the key reasons is because during the COVID-19 um, is a matter of survival a lot. So basically a lot of organizations, um, they, need to I mean, they, they need to change their operation model to actually survive and actually bring in new revenue stream. For example, um, in banks, they need to, um, to move more uh, faster to do more online service so that they can serve their customer uh, anytime, anywhere. So how does it um, relate to API then? So uh, according to a number of uh, uh, report and survey, we, we see that actually um, API is the core element for a lot of digital transformation agendas. So for example, 58% uh, of the executives saying uh, participating in API economy is their top priority. 
And um, more than 50% of the uh, IT decision makers saying uh, API actually is a, the asset to help them to build better digital experience and products for their customer. And when we talk about um, um, the actual um, people running the operations, 93% agree that API is actually very relevant and the essential of the functioning of their organizations. So you can see that APIs actually are the core to a successful digital transformation. So move to the trend. The first one, the first trend I want to talk about is um, internal APIs continue to drive the API growth. It, it may sound a little bit um, different from what people think because when we talk about APIs, uh, usually we, we think about um, ecosystem, we think about um, monetization of API, etc. But uh, as a matter of fact, when you look at data, so basically internal API is always the focus of a lot of organizations. And when we look at the number of APIs, more than half of them is um, purely for internal. And you can see the growth rate is actually uh, growing very quickly. And um, outside this internal APIs, you also see a lot of uh, like um, partner API, external API. But when you look at those APIs, in, in fact, a lot of them are used for both uh, internal and external. So only a very small portion of APIs actually exclusively designed for partners or people outside of the companies. So uh, when, when you're talking thinking about um, um, the, the API, your strategy, maybe the first place to really think of from is uh, from your internal leads. And then you can expand that to um, cover external or the ecosystem. OK, the second trend I want to talk about is, um, so what's driving uh, API growth? So uh, according to, to research or paper, we're seeing that actually microservice continue to be the leading technology area to drive the API growth. You, you can say you can you can see from from the, the chart here, actually over sixty five percent saying that um, microservice will be uh, the, the leading uh, technology area to to implement the API. And we also see that from uh, some market research, the global cloud microservice market is growing at a very fast rate. It's over twenty percent per year. So. Um, so therefore, microservice, although have been around for a few years, but we actually seeing the um, the momentum of adopting microservice is growing very quickly, and we are, we are, can expect anticipate in the next two three years, for example, in Hong Kong, more and more companies or enterprise will be uh, moving to that. So um, when we go for microservice, um, you can see that actually 85% of organizations using microservice, they are also deploying uh, technologies like Surface Mesh as part of the uh, overall deployment. And uh, for the remaining 15%, actually uh, most of them is planning to um, do that in the near future as well. So um, basically when, when you think about when you want to deploy microservice and API, you should also think about uh, deploying Surface Mesh as a whole platform. So looking at the um, chart um, on the right-hand side, it's very simple. When you look at, usually when you talk about API management, we are talking about the uh, loft cell traffic. We are talking about the external interface. Um, but as people, um, more and more and more organizations uh, are implementing uh, microservice and uh, doing more APIs, actually uh, you're seeing the capacity is growing. So we really need to have some, some way to manage um, the communication between your own microservices. And surface mesh will be the, um, the technologies that uh, most of people are choosing. So basically you're managing the uh, east-west traffic and, and doing a lot of uh, control and management on that. So that if you are going to look for deploying microservice in your organization, you should also look at um, a surface mesh and, and, and API management platform as a whole when you do that. So the next trend I'm talking about is a hybrid environment. I believe most of us um, should, should not be uh, unfamiliar with that uh, situations. So when you look at the uh, market research and paper, so actually more than 64% of uh, people having a hybrid environment. That means they have the system actually running on both public cloud and their on-premises environment. At the same time, same for API as well. Um, moreover, as you can see the, the changing uh, um, application strategy from, from the industry, a lot of customer enterprise actually is going for SaaS model. So basically they, they need to um, use um, public cloud to deliver the whole application service. And um, a lot of those services require a lot of integration with your on-premise environment as well. 
So therefore, um, having a um, running API in hybrid environment will become the trend in, in the next two, three years. So um, with that in mind, so um, when we think about the API management solution that you would like to adopt, uh, it should be able to support hybrid environment as well. So um, hopefully that um, API management platform or solutions that you deploy should actually uh, bring you some benefits. So for example, having a single single um, plane of gas or control plane, so we can actually manage both your public cloud deployment of API gateway and also your on-prem um, API gateway. And that can actually make your uh, deployment faster and also lower your total cost of ownership. So imagine you are, um, if you don't have a single um, centralized API management solution for your hybrid environment, you will have multiple solutions deployed in your environment. You need to have multiple um, team and skills to in order to support that. That is not uh, optimal. Another good thing about that is uh, if you have a um, hybrid environment or uh, API management solutions, you can um, prevent a car when they log in and you can actually enjoy the benefits for both on-premises and cloud solutions. So I think that certainly will be the direction for the, for the next few years. Um, move on to the next trend, uh, standardization. Um, that's really important because um, as more and more company or organizations are uh, doing the API implementation, and as, as each organization is building more and more and APIs, Manage, man, managing those API and making sure that developer can actually talk to each other and write their program effectively, standardization is a must. Um, when you look at the, um, the market situations, actually more than 90% of people, um, uh, developers are very familiar with REST API. And uh, actually most of them are already um, following um, API standard, like for example, Swagger or Open API standard. That's just a very good um, indication that industry is moving to that direction. Um, but one interesting thing about is um, when you look at that um, this, this survey there, actually you are seeing more and more people um, instead of just uh, using REST and, 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 and Open API or Swagger, a lot of people start looking uh, looking to adopt technologies like WebPost or WebSockets. So that actually indicates um, with the maturity of the uh, Open API and RESTful API, people are now looking at um, other technologies that can actually um, help to uh, feel some of those uh, deficiency from RESTful API. And um, another trend we are seeing here is uh, <clears throat> people are start um, considering using GraphQL. Um, um, the next two slides will give you a little bit more uh, details on that. So um, event-driven API, the next trend. So uh, as I, I mentioned, we are seeing um, more and more adoptions on event-driven APIs. And actually the growth is quite uh, quite big. As you can compare to 2020 and 2019, you actually see a, a, a three times growth of using that. So that indicates that people are start um, exploring outside of the uh, rest of the area. When you look at the right-hand side, the, the quadrants I put in, in the slide here. So it's kind of like the uh, space that uh, we can run API. O on the y-axis is about the, the receivers. So when you call the API, how many, how, like uh, how many people you want to talk to. On the horizontal axis, it's talking about synchronizations, whether you want to have a, a conversational synch synchronous conversation or you want to have an asynchronous conversation. When you divide the whole, um, the total web space into these four, four quadrants, you, you can see that actually Westful API is um, very suitable for only for the uh, left top hand side of the, uh, the, the quadrant. For the other part, event-driven API will be more um, appropriate so that's why uh, you can see that as people are getting more um, familiar and, and more mature on, on RESTful API, they now start exploring the other, other space in, in the, the areas. So a another, another um, driver for event-driven API, uh, we believe is about IoT. Um, in 2021, um, there are more than 10 billion active IoT devices in the world, and we are expecting to see uh, that number to be uh, more than double in the next few years. So um, for REST API, it may not be useful, um, suitable for all those IoT use cases. And, and event-driven API is more appropriate. For example, if you want to stream live video, if you want to wait for the um, IoT device to actually um, send you some notification. So if you use RESTful API, that means you have to pull the device a lot, et cetera. But uh, with event-driven, then you can actually um, just subscribe the, the, the service and notification and then you'll receive that notification when, when the event happened. That will be making more uh, better use 
of resources and, and the whole network environment. Okay, next trend I want to talk about is GraphQL. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the number of developers using GraphQL has been doubled since uh, 2019 to 2020. We are actually expecting uh, more and more people using it in this year and next year. One, one of the key reasons for, for developers to, to start using GraphQL is uh, to actually address some of the deficiency in REST API. REST API is very good. I mean, it's very simple. It's well defined. But uh, sometimes you, you encounter the problem of uh, overfetching or underfetching. What it means is like this. Um, as your application or your, your, your business logic is becoming more complicated, you want to uh, actually um, have more interaction with a lot of service. That means you have to talk to different endpoints to actually call them to get the data you want. Sometimes some of the data may not be um, required for your functions, but you have to fetch it anyway because of the structure of uh, West API. In, in that case, if you are talking to a lot of endpoints and you are getting a lot of unnecessary data, that actually hinder your performance. And uh, on, on the uh, other side um, of the, the, the case is like this, um, underfetching. So for example, um, if you want to get more data, but because of the limitation of the um, existing uh, endpoint API, um, API structure, then you can only get a very small set of data that you want. And then you have to talk to different endpoints, calling different APIs. So it, it then becomes the overfetching problem. So in, in GraphQL, um, the, the good thing is um, you can actually use this as a, a QoE language to define what you want to get from, from the, uh, all the endpoints in one go. In that case, you just make one API call. You can get um, just in time the data you want and, and the, the set of data you want. This is a very effective and efficient way of doing things. Um, of course, there's some problem, um, some pros and cons on using GraphQL, but um, I'm not going to talk about this in, in this meeting. But um, and in data workshop sessions in, in today's event, um, there will be some session about GraphQL. Maybe you can get more information from there. So the next trend is about um, API management. So um, we are seeing the world deploying more and more, and more on AI and machine learning to, um, to on all the, all the kind of tools that you use. And API is low ex exceptions. And in fact, we, we may look at the, uh, the, the research and, and report. We are seeing that um, API analytics has grown a lot. I mean, people in the past, we, we are actually just looking at how many API calls you, you get and, and um, where did it come from? But now you want to get more insight from those API uh, calls or APIs. You want to understand who are calling the APIs, what time they are calling the API, why they are calling the APIs, and uh, how the APIs are uh, related to each other to, to give you more insight so that you can actually plan for your future uh, development and, and your business plan. So looking at the API management platform in the future, you can, um, as I mentioned, AI and ML will be the key um, features with those new platform. So uh, there's some, some area they're addressing. For example, um, they should be leveraging AI and ML to actually improve API onboarding or API creation. You know, um, as developer, they, they don't like doing a lot of documentations. <laughs> So basically, AI and ML can help in this way by uh, looking at, at the code, doing the analysis, then help, actually can help to auto-generate those documentations, or even sometimes the functions like schema, et cetera. That can actually offload a lot of those um, work from developers, so they can focus on working on their the business logic. Um, the second point, second area is monitoring. So um, as I mentioned, as because API is growing a lot, you, you, are, you are going to be sure to have more and more API in your environment. So how are you going to monitor the performance of those API? Um, how, how do you um, scale up and down when it's required? Uh, in the future API platform, we believe that um, a lot of AI and ML will be uh, um, included in the platform to actually look at the trending, uh, look at the user pattern behavior, et cetera, and then do those operational uh, actions accordingly. Data discovery. Um, so uh, as you uh, have, as we are having more and more API, sometimes uh, you even have zombie API. How, how do you make sure you understand your whole API inventory? And how, how do you understand what kind of data is actually um, passed out through your APIs? It's a very important topic. And therefore using AL and, and AI and ML to do data discovery and management will be a key topic for the future API platform. Uh, finally, security, of course, is a very important area. That actually brings to 
the last trend I'm going to talk about, um, API security. So um, one thing you want to see is uh, API actually is going uh, very quickly. I mean, um, more than 100% growing in number of API calls. But at the same time, uh, it's very alarming to see from report the, the number of malicious traffic is actually going faster, <laughs> 300% in six months. So, um, and also another survey from, um, from talking to all those people, they actually API security is in, in the top of their mind challenge. So uh, how do we handle that? Um, besides using ML AI, as I mentioned before, there are two things I think we need to um, work on as company organization. The first thing is about um, the, the mindset. Um, in the past, we, we are always talking about shift left. We are going to um, move all the security assessment, all the security concept in the very beginning of the development life cycle. Uh, but having that alone uh, may not be enough. We, we should adopt more like shift left and protect right mindset because uh, no matter how well you do your planning, your, your design, et cetera, there, there will certainly be some um, way people can exploit your, your program or API. So we, we in the future uh, for API security, besides uh, that, we need to have a very good uh, runtime protection on our overall environment. And we should also adopt a full life cycle approach. Um, besides the, the, the shift left and protect right, we are also um, seeing more and more collaboration between security and DevOps team um, in the industry. But of course, it's not um, as good as what we want. So uh, we need to really have um, more collaboration. And uh, we, we can expect to seeing that um, in a lot of organizations, they will be uh, having uh, more collaboration between the teams or even the, com the, the combining the team together so that they can actually uh, have a better synergy across the, the whole team when they are handling the API security. So uh, um, the final slide I want to talk about is uh, the key takeaway uh, from, from this presentation. The first point, organizations are accelerating their digital transformation program under COVID-19, and API is one of the core elements in their plan. Traditional API technologies such as microservice, DevOps, REST, uh, open API standard will continue to drive the growth of API. However, uh, people are start adopting new API technologies like event-driven API, GraphQL, and you even um, AI and ML in, into the future API management platform. And we will see that become the, uh, the market driver and momentum in the next few years. And finally, um, API security is paramount to the success for any API initiatives. Uh, we can never um, ignore it. So uh, that actually concludes my presentations and I uh, wish everyone have a very fruitful uh, event today and tomorrow. So over to you, Patrick. Hello. Uh, hello, Jimmy. Can you hear me? Yes, Patrick. Yes, oh, sorry. So I, I think I think I, I lost some signal. So, uh, thanks for your uh, sharing here. So, uh, we we still have a few minutes. So, thanks for your uh, sharing on the uh, the major trend. So, I just go to the agenda, and then we 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 are quite sure that we cover the uh, the trend in this two days workshop. So, maybe back to one. Uh, Quick question. So when we are talk to a uh, lot of people talking about the API trend, so um, we are talking about the challenges. So you mentioned API security is one of the challenges. So do you have one or two uh, quick tips? So how how we can better prepare on the trend and how we can manage those challenges? Maybe just one or two bullet to share to our audience. Yes, yes, Patrick. Um, that that's um that's true. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, API security is very important. So um. Two tips I'm going to share with the um, the audience here is the uh, first one, um, never think about um, security is um, uh, the job of any one party, no matter what organization structure you have. For example, someone may think it is a job of the security team. Sometimes uh, in some organization, they think the job is the uh, development teams. But uh, to be successful, I, I, I can assure you based on my experience, you need to have a joint effort and everyone have to put security on, on their one of their top uh, job agenda so that uh, they can work on that. 
Um, the, second, the second one is um, we really need to have, uh, as I mentioned, there are lots of uh, tools in the market help you to manage your API. So uh, if you are really serious about um, building APIs and, and use API for your business, you should also really uh, look for some uh, good management platform that can actually help you to monitor your API security. And also um, to, uh, uh, both the, uh, from, from the scanning of your code to the runtime um, uh, detection of your, your program. So you have to, you need to have a, a complete set of tools covering the whole life cycle of API in order to to be sure that um, you, you are well protected. So that's my, yeah. my two cents on that. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. So uh, if uh, any one of you is interested to talk more uh, with Jimmy, so you can also reach, reach him offline. So that thanks, uh, Jimmy, for your sharing and also thanks for the support from the Hong Kong uh, Computer Society as well. So thanks.